Have you read the proverb today, the 24th proverb? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we are going to be looking at and pondering today. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. If you have a question about con uh, context, pause the video and search the context on your own time. Okay? Follow me along because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. One moment, please. Sorry about that. Have you read the proverb today? Proverbs 24, verses 1 on verse 9. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Hmm. Right away, I, I am made to think of 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever, abideth forever. Yes. And of course, when you read in James chapter 4, James chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And in Proverbs 24, verse 1 again, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Hmm. Evil men, men of the world, men who love this world. Hmm. Come out from amongst them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Okay? Hmm. Verse 2, for their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Usually, which is always contrary to the Lord and to the authorized version of the scriptures. How to get ahead, of li uh, uh, how to get ahead in life. And, um, you know, kind of schemes that people can come up with. Hmm. Saying that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Verse 3. Through wisdom. Wisdom. And unto man he said. The fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Through wisdom is an house. Builded. The fear of the Lord. And by understanding. Departing from evil. It is established. Now. Someone might come to this verse and say, well, see, we're supposed to be building church buildings. No. You and I of the church of the living God, you and I who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, of the body of Christ, we are of the Lord's house. Okay? We are of his house. All right? So, the wisdom is in house builded. Okay? Not an actual physical structure. Okay? But... We are part of his bones and of his, we are of his bones, excuse me, and of his flesh. Okay, we are of his house. We are of the Lord's house. Okay? As ambassadors for Jesus Christ. All right? And knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men and do all things in the fear of God, like Paul said. Okay? And by understanding, it is established. Love not the world. Be not part of that. Be not like that. Don't use the tactics of the world to promote the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. Don't use the tactics of the world to be a witness unto Christ. Be other. Be other. Other than that, 
Now, look at verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Ah, yeah, riches. Riches. What kind of riches? See, Catholicism, through Christianity, has poisoned your minds that the minute you hear riches, what do you instinctively, as trained by Catholicism, and this is a lot without anyone's fault, but what do you immediately think of when you think of riches? The do-re-mi, the money, money, money. It's beyond that. It's far beyond that. But see, Catholicism wants you to think riches, money. It's not always that. Hardly. And note this here in verse 3 and 4. You see wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and understanding departing from evil. Verse 4, by and by knowledge. Fear the Lord and departing from evil will give you knowledge. Okay? The contrary is also true. Okay, you go to the flesh, the world, and the devil, he will give you, he will give you knowledge. But the but that is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Earth. Earthly. From dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Sensual. Your feelings. Devilish. You will be like the Most High. See, the world, the flesh, and the devil gives you a knowledge that is based upon dirt. Your senses, your feelings. So you can be as God's knowing good and evil. But see, the fear of the Lord, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Okay? And by understanding, departing from evil... Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Okay? All right? Verse 5. A wise man is strong. Wise man, someone who fears the Lord. And remember, the fear of the Lord in Scripture is comparable unto the beauty of a woman. And even as beyond compare of rubies. And find gold. The fear of the Lord is a treasure, dear brethren, dear people, that exceeds anything that our finite minds can equate it to. The Lord gives us the picture of a beautiful woman to give us a point of reference. But the fear of the Lord is a treasure beyond anything that you and I could have. From the world, that is. It's precious. Like the blood of Jesus Christ. It's precious. Beyond, it's priceless. It's priceless. Okay? Verse 5. A wise man is strong. Okay? And what does it say about strength? Okay? My grace is sufficient for thee. For in weakness... The, let's read. Let's quote that. Let, instead of me misquoting that... Go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, <laughs> verse 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me, verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Are we strong? No, we are strong in our weakness who is in, in Christ. He is our strength. We are weak. And in our weakness, we are made strong by Christ. And see, the religious, religiosity twists that. You're the strong one. And Jesus is just a crutch. For a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. 
And true knowledge comes from the fear of the Lord and departing from evil. And that leads you into true knowledge. Okay? And a wise man, one who fears the Lord, is strong in Christ. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel, scriptures, and the spirit of truth will lead you, guide you into all truth. And he guides you into the scriptures. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. The Lord used many hands to write the scriptures. The Lord is the author of the scriptures, but he used many hands to put it together. Okay? And also you got to remember, the Spirit of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, will guide you into all truth. The Spirit of God that is in you will not guide you contrary to the Scriptures. It's not going to happen. You can deceive yourself. You can fall. Okay? You can make bad choices. But the Spirit of Truth is not going to lead you contrary to the Scriptures. It's not going to happen. And if you have a spirit that is guiding you contrary to the Scripture... Who is it? Which spirit are you listening to? And look at this, verse 7. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is too high for a fool, because the fool says in his heart there is no God. And they live foolishly, behaving, living as if they say in their heart there is no God. More often than not, I'm finding out a lot with these Christians, they, they won't say that with their lips, but God does know your heart. Yes, he does. It's deceitful. So many of these people wouldn't dare say with their mouth that they, they don't believe in, in their heart that there is no God. But in works they deny him. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. Hmm. Hmm. But when he walketh by the way, remember, even his wisdom faileth him. And the wisdom of the fool is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. See verse 9 right there? Your thoughts can be sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. Got to be careful with that. And also skipping a little in, uh, in this proverb, look at verse 12. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Hmm. Some people like to claim ignorance on certain things. Well, I didn't know, but the thought of foolishness is sin. Hmm. And also, skipping ahead a little, let's go to verse 19 on to verse 20 here. Again, Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. <laughs> and see, in Christianity, and what we are broadcast by, what is Christian, right? Make people envious. They want what the superstar pastor has right? They want what these smiley, happy, go lucky Christians all the day they want, they want what they have, right? But see what these Christians have is not of the Lord, but is of the world. They're glorying in their flesh and worldly things and they're portraying it as something that comes from the Lord and generally usually it is not. See, Christianity through Catholicism, Catholicism, excuse me, through Christianity, 
has trained you that riches are always worldly, tangible things. But those aren't the true riches, dear friend. They're not. Verses 24 on to the close in Proverbs 24. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall whore him. <laughs> Seeing people defend like uh, the Joel Osteens and um, that pig, Roma Army, who I believe that was her herself, in the one comment, um, you know, uh, judge not. <laughs> you, you can tell when uh, someone is trying to defend sin or a wicked sinner or a lost sinner when they say, don't judge, judge not. Just to find the wicked. He that saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nation shall abhor him. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. Okay? Afterwards. The Lord first. The Lord first. Okay? He must increase. But I must decrease. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause. Like in the Bibles, they remove that, you know, Jesus was angry. You know, they, you know, Jesus was angry. But he says, be not angry against thy brother without a cause. They remove without the cause in the Bible, in the Bibles, saying that Jesus was a sinner because he was angry. Hmm? That's why you need to read the authorized version. Okay? But let's continue. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. Say not, I will do to him as he hath done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. Because it's up to the Lord to give a recompense. Okay? Vengeance is his, not ours. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding, void of departing from evil, neck deep in worldly things, steeped in carnality. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down mm. to come in thorns and thistles, you know, they choked the word. And the stone wall, hmm, was this a stone wall daubed with untempered mortar? Then I looked and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Just a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Now, in context, that could mean both um, physical, tangible, temporal things, right? Could, yes. But more rather, hmm. Catholicism through Christianity has lulled so many to sleep. They sleep while they, Catholicism, the Jesuits, live. They sleep, they live. And the focus and attention and the going after is all done in the wrong thing. All done for self-glorification. Or to bring people to a church building to get a little pat on the head. You're not asleep, are you? See, where is the church of the living God? Go to Proverbs 31. 
verses 1 on to verse 9. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son? And what the son of my womb? And what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings, women. Hmm. Oh, like Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And all her daughters. Uh, hmm? Hmm? Nor thy way to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O the mule. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. And we read about that in Revelation 17 and Revelation 18, about how Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, have made the nations drunken with her wine. Yeah. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Verses 8 and 9. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Dumb means not to speak, can't speak, okay, or not able to speak. That's what dumb means, okay? It has nothing to do with intelligence scripturally, even though it, it's been made, you're dumb, uh, means not to speak. That means not speaking, okay? Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Hmm. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. And our Lord says, look not on the outward appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Okay, again, judging. Okay, people love Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Okay, and they, and they quote it as James Hetfield quoted it, not as the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, all right? But we are to judge. But see, we, brethren, we have the, the scriptures, God's perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word for us. We have it. This is what we judge by, not ourselves, not our feelings, okay? But by the authorized version of the scriptures. We judge ourselves daily, first, examining ourselves, okay? We judge ourselves, okay? But we are to judge others by the scriptures, okay? By the scriptures. Because man by himself cannot judge righteously. He can't, because this gets in the way. All the time. All the time. All the time, brethren. Okay. And brethren, also too, we got to remember, there are those of us who know certain things that we ought to do, but we don't do them. And we make excuses. James chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 17. James chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 17. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Now you got to remember about the book of James. This is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. So you got to keep that in mind. But also too, you got to remember Proverbs 27 verses 1 and 2. Proverbs 27 verses 1 and 2. Go there, of course. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. It's one thing. It's one thing to boast the Lord through you. It's another thing entirely to boast you through the Lord. Okay? Christianity has blurred that line. 
Okay? Christianity has bur blurred that line. Can you, you know the difference? Where, where the difference, uh, where that line is, where you're boasting yourself instead of the Lord? Hmm? Do you know that difference? Do you know that line? Verse 15 in James 4. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And therein, therein, How many of you have been in situations where you know after the fact that the Lord had called you or put you in a situation to use you for his glory? How many times have you walked by something and you had that burning and you should have said something, but you never did? I understand. You, some, you know, you get, you get, you know, worried. Well, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't. But you know what, guys? Sometimes you just got to take a chance and step out of that boat. And believe me, believe me, if it is of you, the Lord will send a check. Oh, I, I promise you that. I promise you that. But if it is of the Lord, it's no glory to you, but only to him. And some of you will make excuses. Well, I'm not, I, I haven't been through the scriptures that much, Brad. I can't speak, Brad. I get timid around people, Brad. Proverbs chapter 4. Think when you, okay, when you, when you start making these excuses, dear brethren, about, well, I'm not this, I'm not that, okay? I've seen babes used to rebuke those who have been walking with the Lord for many years. I've seen it. I've experienced it. When you have a babe in Christ whose voice is cracking and through the scriptures says something to you and you're like, your chin can't go far enough into your chest. It's like, oh, thank you, Lord. For through the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength. Right? Yeah. But, you know, you, we got to remember, this is their hour and the power of darkness. But you brethren, I want you to remember our enemies. Proverbs 14 verses, Proverbs 4 Verses 15 and 16. No, verses 14 on to 19. Okay? Proverbs 4, 14 on to 19. Think about this. While you're sitting there making excuses, think of our enemies. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Okay? For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. And a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. Okay? Again, saved people don't fall away. Saved people fall. Lost people, those who are not of us, they are the ones who fall away. Okay? Verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Bread of wickedness, the Catholic way for cookie, and the wine of violence, transubstantiation, now it's blood. 
But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And what does it say in Psalm 119? Oh, where is that? Oh, one, one moment. Psalm 119, none. Okay. Look at that. Look at that in uh, Proverbs 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more on and more unto the perfect day. Psalm 119, none. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. I have sworn I will perform it. That I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord. And teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand. Yet do I not forget thy law. Uh, verse 109 right there, right there is telling you for what dispensation this is for, okay? Uh, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Weird. This is obviously instruction in righteousness, okay? If you haven't figured that out already, okay? But see, my soul is continually in my hand. In the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works, yes, their soul was in their hands because the seal until the day of redemption, that circumcision made without hands, wasn't there as a permanent residence under the law as it is today. So that right there, verse 109, is showing you what dispensation this is for. But we are looking at this for our instruction and in righteousness. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. The wicked have laid a snare for me. Yet have I... Yet I have, yet I erred not, excuse me, from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. They are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. Verse 18 in Psalm, uh, Proverbs 4, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They know not at what they stumble. Look at verse 16. Think of our enemies. Our enemies who have a hundred YouTube channels are daily active on multiple social media platforms. Think about this. These devils who are up at all hours of the night, okay, who barely sleep. Why? For they sleep not except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. They have hundreds of uh, YouTube channels. They make channels just to drop a re ridiculous one-line comment and then it gets blocked and it's no skin off their backside. They have hundreds of channels and they are busy all the time on other uh, social media platforms spreading that doctrine, that doctrine of anti-Christ, a false gospel, another Jesus. Okay? Our enemies are incredibly active because this is their hour in the power of darkness. And so many will have this, well, our time is ending. So we're just going to lay down and play dead and let them. And the, and the band played on? I like to use the Titanic as an example there because, you know, those guys, I mean, those guys who were feeding the boilers until she broke in half and then it was like futile, but they kept going. They kept going. They fought until the very bitter end. Well, when does it become vanity? The Lord will show you if you're, if like, for example, you're witnessing to someone and, and it's not going well. The Lord will show you. It's like, hey, you're wasting your time. This person isn't going to hear. Good. There are still people out there who will. Okay, he's heard enough or she's heard enough. Go to the next one. Okay? All right? But our enemies, these despicable Jesuit coadjutors who work for the Vatican, 
They, they, brethren, look at how active they are. Look at how active they are. What are we doing? Sitting there waiting. And now, like I said, I get it. Yes, this is their hour and the power of darkness. We, the church of the living God, sooner or later here are going to be redeemed and then these guys are going to have their parade because we're out of here and whatnot and they're damning souls to hell. Yes, okay? But he who not let us will let until he be taken out of the way. we got to stop with these excuses, brethren. Some of you, you know, this is... Well, it's not an excuse, it's a reason. You're right, it's a reason. But does that reason also be used as a crutch? Ah, yeah, smack yourself. Smack yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And there are many things that we put into that equation. Well, I don't want to do it out of my own power. Um, if you first submit yourself unto the Lord, we're going to look at that. It won't be in your own power because you know that you're powerless. Okay? If you're going to do something out of your own flesh, the flesh is what's going to be gratified, not the Lord. Okay? Okay? Yeah, yeah. Go, go to Luke chapter 14. Go to Luke chapter 14. Remember, dear brethren, while we doubt and wonder, and, well, I'm not this, I'm not that, and you know, you might have valid reasons. You might have valid reasons. And I'm sure some of you do. But you don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow. And there are some doors that the Lord will open that you will only get one shot at. For the Lord, I regret the, chance, the shots that he gave me that I didn't take. He gave them to someone else, but there are moments like that, brethren. And it's no glory to you. It's no glory to you. Okay? There are moments where the Lord will orchestrate something where he wants you specifically to do something in a given situation. And when whatever, whatever your reason is that you decide not to get out of the boat and go with the Spirit's guiding, the Lord is that Spirit, and you blow it! You know, we, we've talked about this. You know, the children of Israel, you know, going to the promised land, they blew it! And the Lord's like, okay, you, you blew that one. You're going into the wilderness. What do they do? Okay, we're sorry. Let's go. And Moses stayed in the camp. It's like, guys, okay. Oy, fine, go. And then they get their tail uh, whipped and they come back with their tail between their legs. If our enemies, now, yeah, our enemies, this, this is their hour, the power of darkness. Yes, our time is ending. Yes, 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 yes. So what, you're just going to roll over and play dead? I can't do this. I can't do that. My brother made a statement that has resonated just... Uh, those who have the most seem to do the least. Isn't that something? It's like, wow, profound, isn't it? Those who have the most seem to do the least. <laughs> the more they have, the less they do. That's going to be the title of this video. But yet, when you look at it, why is it that the least of all are the ones who are doing the most, but all these who have all these assets and all these things, right? Hmm. Luke chapter 14, verses 15 on to 24. 
And when one of them sat, and when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that eateth bread in the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, spiritual reference, okay? Not the physical, literal kingdom of heaven, okay? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Still doctrinally under the law, okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? So when he says kingdom of God, this is not a reference on to the kingdom of heaven, the uh, physical, okay? Brew it to you. Absolutely. Certain man, and he's... Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Reference, kingdom of heaven, okay? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the people, unto the Jewish people, okay? Continue. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and shewed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. So see, he came offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Jewry as a whole rejected the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And after that rejection, the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, the kingdom of God, okay? All right? And then the Jews, of course, rejected, uh, Jewry as a whole rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual, and us Gentiles were grafted in to make them jealous. But see, in this context, the kingdom of God, the Jewish people that were having the kingdom of heaven preached on to them, they had to believe that Jesus is the son of David. Okay? <laughs> okay? He came preaching the kingdom of heaven. But see, he, was, he is their king. And in order for the son of David <laughs> to, to reign as king, right? Right? What would have happened if his people would have accepted him as their king? See? Okay? Not that he needed them to uh, believe on him for him to be king. No, not that at all. But see, he went offering first the kingdom of heaven, the physical. But they would not receive their king. Okay? And they made all excuses about it. Oh, he isn't this, he isn't that. It, can anything good come from Galilee? They made excuses. Okay? They made excuses. So see, kingdom of God here is not the kingdom of heaven. It's the spiritual. Because then he says... In verse 21, it's like, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes and the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Okay? Those that are without. Okay? Okay? And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house might, may be full. For I say unto you that none of those which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Now, verses 23 and 24, these heretics like to say, will like to twist this. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, he uses this, compelled them to come in. Compel them to come into a building? No, no, okay? God does not dwell in temples made by hands, okay? And then verse 24, these heretics will go to that and say that God is done with Israel. Oh, no, no. Remember, the house of God, okay? We are not building a physical, literal kingdom, okay? But we who are saved are of the house of God, okay? The kingdom of God, the spiritual, the gospel of today, okay? Okay? But see, how many make excuse? 
How many make excuse? Okay, this is actually a perfect picture, I believe, of the Lord first offering the kingdom of heaven, but then those who were bidden said, no, you know, I'm doing this. You're not the Messiah. Okay, you come out of Galilee. No, 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 we believe on you. Then we're going to lose. No. So what happens? They reject the kingdom of um, the kingdom of heaven. And even thus, Jewry as a whole, not individually, Jewry as a whole rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual, after the official rejection and then the death, burial, and resurrection of the kingdom of heaven and then the kingdom of God, okay? In Acts chapter 2 especially, it talks about that. But by Acts chapter 7, Jewry as a whole rejected the gospel, the kingdom of God, and then we were grafted in. See? See how rich this portion of scripture is under that? Okay? All right? And the servant said, Lord, it is, verse 22, it is done as thou hast commanded, yet there is room. Okay? Room. What does that mean? See, Christians will come to the, I've seen it. Charles Spurgeon himself used this as a reason to get people into a building. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Stay away from these wicked phallus house buildings, Brethren, stay away from these places. They are vile. They are evil. They are of Satan himself. Okay? Uh, Acts chapter 7. Okay? Verses 48 on to 50. Albeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Okay, all right. What excuses are we making? God is not done with his people. Absolutely not. And we're not building physical a physical kingdom today. Okay, but we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the compelling to come in, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. See, see how that ties in for our instruction and in righteousness here in Luke chapter 14. Okay, you see that? If the Lord could speak through an ass. Okay? And of course, but religiosity, Christianity, the twists this. Okay? Check this out. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. But see, Christianity, those in the church building, okay? Isaiah chapter 30. See, Christianity has turned it all into the glorification of flesh. Christi Christianity is a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Because Catholicism is Christianity, especially today. Okay? Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. They walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Do you fear the Lord or do you fear men? And religion, Christianity, is under the headship of Pharaoh Satan. And it's all worldly. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them nor be and help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. 
They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses, and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain, and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. But now put this into the equation. Their strength is to sit still, but yet they are going like in Jeremiah. They run to the forefront to be noticed of everybody. They are busy, busy, busy. But see, their strength is to sit still. Think about that. They go to people to cause them to fall. They're not there for edification. Okay? Or exhortation. No. But they're there to keep people in sin. When a brother or sister needs to hear, uh, hey, you need to repent of that. Okay? You need to put that away. You're, you're, you're in a lot of danger. Okay? Your walk. Okay? The fruit. Okay? <laughs> you're, you're in a lot of danger. No, but these guys, their strength is to sit still. Keep them still in their sin. They're busy promoting that kingdom of Antichrist. That gospel of Antichrist. Another gospel. Another Jesus. And hence, they go nowhere but stay rooted in sin while they think they're going on. And what are we doing? What are we doing, huh? Well, brethren, what are we doing? And see, a lot of Christianity, a lot of this Christianity, Ezekiel 33, Ezekiel 33, verses 31 on the 32. And they come unto thee as thy people, as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. But they do them not. Our enemies are active. Our enemies are active. Extraordinarily so. To make one proselyte, to make them twofold more the child of hell than themselves. And then once they make them a twofold more child of hell than themselves, those children of hell go out preaching another Jesus, another gospel, and to keep these people bound in their sin. To think that they're going forward, but yet always keeping them shackled and chained. And we who have the truth, we're shackled and chained because we make it, well, I'm not this, I'm not that. See, the difference between religion and the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. There's a big difference between faith and religion. A big difference. And Christianity has blurred that line so significantly that most people, it seems today, cannot discern between them. Because what is religiosity? What is Christianity today? Matthew chapter 23 is a good example. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Okay? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. It's a shoe. It's entertainment. It's a, it's a sham. Okay? <clears throat> they make broad their phylacteries 
and enlarged the borders of their garments, and loved the uppermost rooms of, at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets to be called of men rabbi, rabbi. Matthew chapter 23 is, of course, explaining the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But see, religiosity, Christianity, compel them to go to a building. Look at how I've tithed. Oh, I'm giving an old lady a hand across the street. Hmm. And see, the thing about us doing good works. See, again, Christianity through these wicked, pond scum devil, easy believism heretics, they have got those of the church of the living God, some of them, so paranoid of doing works for the Lord. And you got these heretics, easy believism guys saying, you're talking about works to stay saved or keep yourself saved or to get. No, no. See, the devil through these heretics have got some of you a paranoid about doing any work for the Lord that you might encounter. Oh, you're preaching works-based salvation. Or what's one that they use? You're backloading works into salvation. <laughs> Do you fear men or God? Brethren? Do you fear men or God? Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Yes. Not of works, works of the law, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Some of you are so paranoid of doing something for the Lord that you might enc encounter some of these stupid, willfully ignorant, uh, easy believers and devils who is like, hey, you're backloading works until salvation, onto salvation. You're preaching a works-based salvation. We're called onto good works. We're called onto that. Not to stay saved or to be saved. It's right there between 8 and 10 in Ephesians 2. What more do you need? What more do you need? Okay? Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verses 3 on verse 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Godliness. Uh, come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Instruction in righteousness. Paul is made, is referring on to that, the doctrine of godliness being other than that. Okay? What our Lord said for our instruction in righteousness of being other than the world, dispensationally, you know, uh, instruction in righteousness for us today. You want to learn how to fear the Lord, you read the Old Testament. And the words that our Lord said, especially before the death, burial, and resurrection, were doctrinally under the law. But for our instruction and in righteousness, they hold a lot of weight for us. So that's what he's talking about in verse 3. Okay? That doctrine that's according to godliness being separate other than that. Okay? Notice it doesn't say the doctrine which is according to salvation. Okay? And walking godly, according to the scripture, is a result of salvation. Notice that. He is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmising. And again, the words to no profit are those who come along today speaking about, hey, today you got to keep the law to be saved and stay saved. Okay? That words to no profit that Paul warns about are people coming along trying to take things from the law and make them applicable doctrinally for us today. Okay? All right? And these, and then in verse 4 here, well, what is repentance? Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. 
Prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is work. Okay. <laughs> and also, uh, stripes of words. Okay. What is a man? What is a woman? Okay. <laughs> Euphemistic language is a Jesuitical masterpiece that Satan has honed over the centuries to deceive so many people. Verse 5. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. And of course, gain, what kind of gain? Remember, Catholicism has trained you to think money, popularity, lands, cars, mansions, swimming pools, clothes, friends. And Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Hmm. But see, a lot of these fakes do so many good works, right? But it's all fleshly. To be to get the praises of men, and when it, well, I give ties to my building. I have been used. I feel like Paul. I do this. I. You encounter one of these Christians, and you talk to one of these Christians about this very thing that comes out sooner or later. It does. It does. Christianity is all about self. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints is all about Jesus Christ. Go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Verses 24 on to verse 30. Twenty-four on to verse 30. In Luke chapter 22. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be counted, accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. <laughs> Church system of today, anybody? But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, the head of the table. But I am, you get your little pen right here, and you circle that I am, okay? But I am among you as he that serveth. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God the Father. But I am among you as he that serveth. God the Father washing the feet. The stanking, nasty feet of the fishermen. Okay. God shall provide himself a lamb. A burnt offering. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now his kingdom that he's mentioning right there, of course, is the kingdom of heaven. But the point why we looked at this is those who serve. He who sits at me, the head, Christ is our head. Christ is our head, but we are called to serve. Serve him, and in serving him we serve others. And you have reasons, you have excuses, dear brother, sister. Yes, you do. But knowing that, I, here, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> 
verses 9 on to verse 11. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And that's not talking about salvifically, that's talking about your rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verses 11 on to verse uh, 17, okay? For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now Catholics like to twist this and say this is talking about purgatory. This is talking about the works we have done. Okay? Our rewards, not salvation, because it says right there, yet, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay? The works we are doing are works for the Lord. And if they are works for the Lord that glorify him, that's the gold, silver, precious stones. Wood, hay, stubble is the stuff that gets burned up that glorify us only. Okay? All right? We're once saved, always saved. Okay? What we're going to be judged on at the judgment seat of Christ is our works. Okay? After salvation. Not for or to stay, but for the glory of the Lord. That's what's going to be, because we're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. Okay? But are you going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? Or are you going to be allowed in with the Lord be like, ah, just just go, I don't, yes, you're just go, I don't want to even. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 again, okay? Verse 11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Verse 12, For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. Like so many of these devils who are so active right now, right now, they glory in appearance, not in heart. And they defend their sin. Well, God knows my heart. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Verses 14 and 15. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. And Christianity seeks yours. They seek you so that they may seek yours and glory in your flesh. Yeah, not in God. See how that works? For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Dear brother. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestow, uh, am I reading the right one? Yes. Bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Really? Look at that verse. How that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep 
poverty abounded onto the riches of their liberality. Proverbs 13, verse 7. Proverbs 13, verse 7. One verse. Hmm. There is that which maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Great riches. Hmm. Let's continue in uh, 2 Corinthians 8. Verse 3. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Now right again, again, Christianity teaches you that this is talking specifically only about money. Could have been wine, could have been bread, it could have been clothing as well. Okay, provisions for the necessity, providing for the necessity of the saints. Okay, it could have been, I mean, yes, money may have been involved, but it is more than that. The gift, okay, clothing, food, wine, stuff like that. But see, for us, brethren, it's more deeper than just tangible. Okay, so let's continue. Praying us with much entreaty that they would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Look at verse 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Ah! Right there it is, verse 5. Why are you doing the things that you do? So that you may be rewarded by Satan? Hmm? You devils? Huh? Why are you doing what you do, Christian? So that you look good? So that it will accrue to you? Huh? In the beginning, God. Huh? Why are you doing what you do? Like I've said to you before, if you're doing things just for the sake of the reward, you're missing it. If I get any rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, that's a blessing. I'm doing this for him who first loved me and gave himself for me. That's why. Not that I look good. I did get a little pat on the head. If that comes at the judgment seat of Christ, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That's not the motivation why we do it. And these Christians, these coadjutors, they're doing it all for fleshly means. And where are we, brethren? Look at that verse. And this they did, not as we had, as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Insomuch that we desire Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance, look at this, and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us see that ye abound in this grace also i speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love for ye know that the grace of our lord for ye know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich. And of course, these wicked charismatic Christians take this and turn it into something, you know, money. You know, read Luke 16, verses 1 on to verse 13 in your own time today. And you read about the unjust steward who the Lord said you can no longer be steward. Instead of 
trying to uh, see what he could do to be made right with the Lord, he did what? He first immediately thought of his own backside and he went about to how to preserve his own self instead of making himself uh, making it right with the Lord. Okay? We might read that yet, but I want you to consider this. Okay? Christians, these charismatics, will come to verse 9 and say, See? God wants you to be wealthy. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 10. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, and distresses, in stripes, and imprisonments, in tolments, in labors, in watchings, and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. What kind of riches are these being described? See, Christianity tells you it's Money. No. No. Fear the Lord. Comparable unto a beautiful, beyond a beautiful woman, beyond precious stones, rubies, gold, jewels, anything that comes of the earth that Satan will offer you. The true riches. And who is the truest of all gems? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Priceless. Jesus Christ is the true riches of heaven. Haven't you figured that out? But what Jesus are they giving you? They are giving you a Jesus that's all about this. And it shows in their fruit. You know, let's go to Luke 16. Let's go to Luke 16. Let's go to Luke 16. As the Lord leads and guides, obviously, okay? But see, you first give yourself unto the Lord. And he will lead you and guide you. But see, brethren, you got to, you got to, you got to take that step out the boat sometime, brother, sister. Our enemies, look at our enemies, how busy they are. And where are we? Where are we? There are some of you doing as we are supposed to. Yes. But there are a lot of you who aren't. And you're making excuses. Enough. But Luke 16. Verses 1. On to verse 13. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Now, with presented with this, how should one have it's like Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I I, I repent. Okay? It's been blown, maybe, right? Like we already talked about. Children of Israel, they had that one door open, but they blew it, okay? Go on to the next one. That that was done. I gave that to you. You messed it up or you didn't do it. You chose to be afraid of men, not fear me. You didn't get out of the boat, whatever it is, okay? I repent, Lord. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. 
Did this man seek, go to seek how he might be made right with the Lord? No. What did he do? Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. They? Not the Lord? They? We've talked about this before. But unfortunately, how it works around here on this stuff, you're only as relevant as your newest video. <sighs> okay? So, this unjust steward, was he concerned about his relationship with his Lord? No. He was con concerned about his own buttocks. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto him, unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. Look what he does. He speaks smooth things. Look at this. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Don't give the whole tale, but just half. Just half instead? Okay, hey! That sounds good to me! Then I keep a little for myself. Even though he owed, what? A hundred measures of oil. And here he comes smoothly. Not... Not, uh, how, what's that? Don't offend the tithers or something about the classes, whatever that is, right? Right? Yeah. Didn't offend them, but give, give a little something. Keep, keep, you know, 50 50. Huh? There's some for you. Then we're all happy when he owed him what? A hundred measures of oil? Hmm. Then he said he to another, How much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. A hundred measures, so eighty. Even more, but yet keep a little back. See? And look at this, verse 8. And the Lord commended the, the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. According to who? The Lord or the world? For the children of this world, it answers your question right there, are in their generations wiser than the children of light. How does that, what does that mean? <laughs> They're worldly wise. Okay? These Christians. They're wiser in the things of the... These uh, coadjutors who use the system of YouTube to their advantage. That's because they work for the Vatican. That's how there's, you know, uh, I heard about Twitter that Twitter can do something where they can hide a channel from view, but yet not delete it. Mm. When you type in certain channels, word for word, their channel, but yet their channel never comes up. That's got to be, they got to have some kind of thing with uh, the powers to be of these social uh, media things, don't you think? Because <laughs> they work for Satan. Jesuits. Hmm? Yeah. 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 They're wiser. The children of this world, these carnal, right? Yeah. These Christians. They're friends of the world. See, the Lord was, he was saying, yeah, you did good by the world. You did good by yourself. Didn't do good by me, but you did good for yourself. See that? And now verse 9, see, and Christianity, I've heard this, will come to this and tell Christians, make friends with the world. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Think about that. How many, I've heard this from these Christians. Be friends with the mammon. But you know, don't love it, but be friends with it. That way when you mess up, they will. The Lord is saying to someone whose only concern is, is himself, yeah, be friends with the world because you don't want to be friends with me. You don't want to make yourself right with me. You don't want to come to me. 
Okay? You're only concerned about yourself. You're not coming to me. So, hey, since you're only concerned about yourself, sure, go, bravo, you did good. You did good by yourself, but not with me. And look at verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Verse 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to, your, commit to you the true riches? The true riches. And see, this steward, only thinking about worldly things, he was more concerned about his rear end and making himself right with people so that he would have a place instead of being concerned about how he could be made right with the Lord. And... You think the Lord is going to commit to the unjust steward true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? And verse 13, see, turns this all on its head. And the Christians twist it. It's like, you can be friends with mammon, but don't love it. The context is talking about someone who chooses things of the world over being right with the Lord. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Who do you fear? You fear man or the Lord? First Timothy chapter 6 and we will be done. First Timothy chapter 6. Verses 6 on to verse 12. See how we did that? But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. No matter how much the devils want you to believe that you can. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. That's all you need. Well, I have this, I have, yeah. This is a luxury. This. That's a luxury. Having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Foolish is in that ver uh, verse. So rich there, what context with foolish is being mentioned? He's referring on to the worldly riches in this. Isn't he? Prove it to you. For the love is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. <laughs> but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. You're once saved, always saved. If you are of the church of the living God, you came to him on his terms, broken and contrite and in fear of him, you called upon his name. You're going to heaven. Don't be afraid of that. Of not, you're like you're gonna, you can't lose what isn't yours to lose. Okay? Get busy. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called. And as professed, a good profession before many witnesses. And verses 17 on to verse 19. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Not just this. That they do good and that they be rich in 
good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Talking about the rewards at the judgment seat, which we have already discussed. I heard it said once in this manner. You know that sometimes, brethren, the ministry of presence can be an incredible gift to someone. Someone who needs you, who needs an ear. I mean, yes, they have the Lord, but the Lord, we are to be there one for another, right? Remember Job's <laughs> three friends? How they went to Job when they saw his grief was very great. And what did they do? They just sat there. They just sat there. And they messed it all up when they started talking, okay? Okay. And started to reason with them. It's like, well, you must have done something. But see, what they did was, they were just there. Sometimes, brethren, being there in the same pre in the same space online. Sometimes, just being there is a gift that some would count far beyond rubies. Listening to someone who has a lot to say, who has a heavy heart. Not just sitting there waiting to pounce on them to correct. No, sometimes you just need to shut up and let people speak. Ministry of presence. Sometimes that's, some, I've seen this. I've been there with this, you know. Letting someone, embracing someone, and letting them snot and cry all over you. See, we are called to be ambassadors, to walk our talk, okay? And sometimes, brethren, sometimes, like I said, just being there can be a precious jewel onto people who need it. And whatever it is that the Lord has called you on to, brethren. But see, brethren, our time is ending. This is their hour in the power of darkness. But this does not mean that we tuck our tail and lay down passively. Okay? When the Lord has totally closed the doors is when we get caught up. Okay? The Lord might have closed the door on you in some angle or aspect. You, like I said, you might be uh, busy, you know, talking to someone and you're getting nowhere and the Lord's like, hey, that, that door, this guy doesn't want to hear it. Go on to the next one, okay? A door might have been open and you've gone through it, okay? And whatever, but something is like, it's a stalemate or whatever. Go on to the next one, okay? Brethren, until we here come up hither, the doors are going to be open. See, because once we get redeemed, that's when this dispensation ends. And salvation changes. Okay? Salvation changes after this dispensation. Salvation changes within the dispensations. That's what makes the dispensations. Okay? All right? You're not saved by faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. That's heresy. Okay? Nor are you saved by keeping the law from Genesis on to Revelation. Okay? All right? Brethren, our enemies are active right now. And the way they are active is astounding. But like the unjust steward, they're only concerned about themselves and how Satan, because Satan says what? All this will I give you if you fall, if you fall down and worship me. And look at some of these guys here on YouTube who got inroads with the powers to be at the empire here of YouTube who can remain hidden even when you put their exact channel name in the search. And yet that doesn't come up. 
that that's that's weird. That's weird. That's weird. Then again, there are serpents. You know, they they their ways are movable, and they'll they'll change their channel on a moment's notice. Then the, the thing, and that of course throws off the algorithm. Okay, <laughs> brethren. You have reasons, but don't make excuses. And don't use your reasons as a way to make an excuse. Until we hear come up hither, we are to be ambassadors for Christ. Now, if the Lord closes the door, he closes the door. Seek the Lord, go on to the next one. But, brother... Sister, get off your duff and do something. Do something, whatever it is. Don't tell me, don't say the Lord has called me to nothing. Are you living in sin and the Lord's like, fine, here, I'm going to put you on the shelf so you won't do nothing? Examine yourself. But do something. going to be it for this video. Why does it seem that those who have the most do the least, but yet those who have the least seem to do the most? Why is that? Hmm. Hmm. The more we are given, the more that is required. Is that what some of you are afraid of? And all these Christians that have all this stuff, they come up with all these excuses why they can't do this or why they won't do this. And when they do it, they do it to make themselves look good. And we as a church of the living God, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. Shush. Get out of the boat. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Pray for one another. If you can and needs be, be there for someone of the Church of the Living God. Because we are to be there one for another. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you and we will see you in the next video. Whenever and if ever that be. <laughs>